Well, fuck me. It appears my recent videos are indeed being shadow banned from YouTube search results. Not only this, but I've had videos taken down for violating terms of service, but weren't actually given a strike on my account. As if the sole purpose of all of this is just to silence me and stop the spread of my videos. This could be evidenced by the fact that I receive similar ratings and an amount of comments to channels with ideological views which fall more in line with mainstream narratives who receive more views and more people subscribe to them. This exact same correction can be observed in other ANCAP channels on YouTube as well. However, this correction doesn't occur if examining conservative or minarchist channels with a similar influence. So it seems that not only am I being shadowed, Band, but other select few and cap channels are as well. Now, I would argue that it's based on our explicit advocacy for counter economics, but Corbett Report's channel doesn't seem to be affected by this apparent shadow banning. So, that doesn't appear to be the case. The only other characteristic that we all have in common is that we have a few thousand subscribers and are slowly developing a significant influence in YouTube's political scene. So it appears that ANCAP YouTubers, particularly the up-and-coming ones, are being directly targeted by YouTube and other mainstream social media outlets. It's not just YouTubers, it's also news outlets with libertarian or anarchist leanings as well. On Twitter, for instance, Antimedia and Free Thought Project have had their accounts banned, along with Police the Police and Filming Cops. The last two aren't even necessarily political media outlets as much as they are news outlets which promote skepticism towards the justice system and spread police brutality stories that receive little coverage and happen to have anarchist leanings which is especially egregious considering Twitter's support for Black Lives Matter. Interesting how Twitter's against police misconduct and skeptical of the state until that skepticism deviates away from the demonstrably untrue social justice narratives and focuses on the actual problem, which is that the state is an unaccountable monopoly that the police only exist to collect payments for and enforce the rule of their politicians. So if you want to support any of your favorite ANCAP content creators, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe because that really helps us out. If you could share our videos, that would especially help out because, as noted, we appear to be in the middle of a direct and deliberate attack against our growing influence from these social media companies. And the last thing they want is for our messages to be spread around, along with the news that they're doing this to us. There's going to be a new full video here soon, I promise. I'm just in a little mini rut right now where I'm not really feeling like writing as much and just sort of want some time to myself. Plus, I've been incredibly busy with the Fnet project, a side project which I started that I'm keeping on the down low until it's finished, and some real-life work-related drama. So, content for the foreseeable future is going to be a bit more scarce, but don't worry, I'm not going anywhere and I'll get back to it as soon as I can. But before I go, I did want to very quickly address the good censor document which has been circling around lately that was an internal memo going around Google's management teams that was leaked to the public. This is really more of the same but a direct confirmation of what we already knew. However, this document is important because it shatters the narrative which both CEOs of these tech giants and politicians have been spreading in response to internet censorship through social media companies, which is that we need government regulation to stop censorship of these online companies. The document cites both a protectionist piece of regulation which they use as their legal basis for operating how they currently are. Funnily enough, it's a section of the same bill which net neutrality supporters point to as an example of net neutrality regulations. And the document also points out that searches on Google have been censored either because of government interference or by the request of politicians directly, something that everybody who's covering this seems to be conveniently omitting from their coverage. The problem here, as unintentionally pointed out by Google, was caused by government regulation. So more regulation is not going to solve the problem. There is a bill which is currently being passed around the Senate which will only make the problem 
worse, as it explicitly, among other atrocious infringements on our privacy, would have the FCC nationalize the internet, then arrest people who ran websites that host opinions that the FCC deems to be unfair. And yes, of course the FCC determines what is and isn't fair. Both sides have a direct incentive which motivates them to want these regulations, which is why both sides want them. The media and tech giants want this regulation because it would kill their competition, and the government wants it because it would allow them to control political discussion. I have three other videos going in-depth about the current situation on social media, so that's why I don't have much to say here, but I'm going to go ahead and link all those in the description of this video. Anyway, that's all for now. The only hint that I'm going to present for the upcoming video is that it's a subject which you guys have wanted me to cover for a long time. Thank you all, and I will see you all next time.